Hey everybody, this is TJR. If this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. If not, welcome back. And this arrived today. This is the Rhino High Fidelity release of Black Sabbath, the debut album. And I've bought a few of the albums in this series. Uh, I've bought the uh, first two Cars album that they released. The rest of their releases have been jazz, which doesn't interest me that much. Uh, this time around, along with this, they released Devo's Freedom of Choice, which again didn't interest me, although I do like Devo. I just wasn't interested in that particular release. Uh, of course, these are very limited. They're limited to 5,000 copies. I'm going to pull out the OB strip here right now and just read the essential details here. 180 gram vinyl cut from original analog master tapes by Kevin Gray at Coherent Audio, pressed at Optimal Media, heavyweight gatefold jacket, exclusive insert with commentary by engineer Tom, hopefully I say this right, Alam. Limited numbered edition of 5,000. And uh, let me go ahead here and just uh, pull this out here. And let's take a look at it here. Very high gloss cover. This is a gatefold. We'll open up the inside here. Inside, it's more of a matte finish. And a little bit of history. I used to have this album on CD, but somewhere along the way it went missing. I will say that of the original lineup albums, this one was really my least favorite, to be honest. But after listening to this high fidelity release from Rhino, I really feel like I have to give it a reevaluation because it feels like I'm hearing it for the first time. Now, since I no longer have my original CD copy, I can't do an A to B comparison. But right out the gate, I have to say that this release sounds absolutely amazing. The thunder and rain sound effects uh, that open side one felt incredibly cinematic. I really felt like I was locked inside of an old Hammer horror film. And this is even more amazing to think of now that I've read actually the, like I said, the exclusive booklet that you get, the interview with the album's original engineer. Let me get that for you here. Here it is. And that is one thing that all these releases have is these little uh, exclusive inserts with an interview, which kind of um, work as listening notes, similar to like what you get with Vinyl Me Please with their listening note booklets that you get with their Records of the Month selections. Um, but in this, I read that it was taken off of a sound effects record that they had in the studio. Um, so yeah, uh, that right there kind of blew me away. But the rest of the album, amazing. The drums feel incredibly real and thunderous, and the guitars just scream at you. The bass certainly sounds solid and deep like it should, but I will admit um, there was nothing about the sound of the bass that just kind of like jumped out at me in the way that the drums and the guitar did. Now, this might just be a limitation of the original recordings, though. But the bass, I'm not saying the bass sounds bad. It sounds very solid and deep. Um, also, the lead vocals sound very crisp and precise. Honestly, I really can't get over how different this album sounds to me now. It has been a long time since I've listened to it, though. And I do have to say that um, right after I was done listening to it for the first time, I immediately listened to it again. It was just that good. Now I kind of wonder if maybe I should have gotten that Devo album. I mean, I like Devo, but I never really cared for that album all that much. Considering that this was my least favorite Sabbath album, um, who knows, maybe I would have had a similar experience. Getting back to the insert here, again, we've got a, an interview here um, with the, the original engineer for the first album, and he shares his memories and his perceptions of the band and their music at the time. It's fascinating reading. Um, he is asked, you know, uh, when you were first hearing them record this, were you aware uh, what did you think, uh, you know, because he basically tells him, you know, that where they, did you feel like they were inventing heavy metal? And he said, you know, that genre didn't exist. And when he said, 
He said their producer definitely got the music. He said, but when I was listening to it the first time, he said, I didn't get it. He said, I didn't understand what is this music. He mentioned that the drummer seemed very jazz influenced, was very jazz influenced because it wasn't standard, you know, rock and roll, uh, you know, uh, drumming. Uh, but he was absolutely perplexed by it. I admired his honesty because he could have just tried to play into people's expectations and tell people what they want to hear. Like, oh, yeah, you know, it was, it was amazing. They were inventing heavy metal music, you know, that type of thing. I should also just show you the, uh, the record itself here. It is not on any kind of colored vinyl. It is just on black vinyl as all these releases have been, but there is the label there. And uh, of course, that's the exclusive Rhino High Fidelity label there. These do come in a black paper sleeve, but it is polylined, and so to protect the record and help reduce static. So uh, these are all packaged this way. Um, a little more history that I should share with you. Um, a few years ago, I did upgrade my entire Black Sabbath CD collection, except for the first one. Um, at that time, Warner Brothers had been re-releasing the entire catalog in digipack form. Some of these were in uh, two-disc editions. Some of them were not, but they all included new booklets with new liner notes and lots of memorabilia photos. And in fact, this album here, the first album, was one of the two CD editions. I had been thinking I should pick that one up. Uh, for whatever reason, I put it off probably because it was my least favorite or at least it was up until now, of course. These re-releases coincided with the reunion tour from some years back. They featured, or I should say, they didn't feature any new remastering. That's because they didn't have to. They just used the last most recent remastering, which was just a few years prior. And honestly, yeah, it didn't need it. So I actually kind of respected that they didn't use remaster as a sales gimmick and that they directly said, you know, this uses an old remaster, basically just the packaging's new. But they were also very cheap. So uh, my uh, versions were much older. So to me, it was a complete upgrade, not just visually package-wise, but also audio-wise was an upgrade. Now, a few years ago, I did buy a modern pressing of Paranoid. And I'll be honest, I was disappointed with it. I ended up getting rid of it since it didn't offer any real improvement or different experience from the CD version. Recently, however, though, Vinyl Me Please released their own pressing of Master and Reality. Now, unlike the modern pressing of Paranoid from Warner Brothers, I thought that this Vinyl Me Please release did offer an improved audio experience, plus the packaging on it was just amazing. And while it was improved, as far as the audio, honestly, it was just nothing like this this Rhino High Fidelity release. And again, these are not cheap. They are only available online through the Rhino website. And the shipping charges, for that reason, make it even more uh, cost prohibitive. But I was knocked out by this release. I mean, I enjoyed the two first two albums by the cars that they've already done. I thought those were excellent. But this really just wowed me. So Rhino, if you're listening, Please release more Black Sabbath albums in this format. Um, yeah, I'll definitely snatch snatch up a copy. But yeah, um, have you checked this one out? Have you heard it? I don't know if it's still available. Again, these are limited to 5,000 copies. What does mine say? 2980 of 5,000. There we go. Um, but yeah, um, this was just great. Let me know if you've heard it. Let me know what you think. And uh, as always, if you like these videos, be sure to hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell notification icon so you never miss a video. I want to thank everybody uh, for watching. I want to thank my patrons. Patrons do receive exclusive weekly videos not available on this channel. Mostly, though, thank you just for hanging out. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.